All right, I see there are a good number of people joining today's meeting. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, so we'll get started. Uh, this is uh, the R adoption series, and today we will be talking about adoption of R in Japan's pharma industry confirmation. Uh, my name is Ning, and I'm from Roche Genetech, and I will be the facilitator for today's event. So this event is hosted by the R Consortium R Submissions Working Group. Uh, this is a cross-industry collaboration to improve open source language usage in the regulatory setting. Uh, and we are a public working group, so uh, anyone is welcome to join our meetings and uh, all our uh, meeting agenda, uh, meeting materials uh, are available publicly on GitHub. So in today's uh, meeting, we will be uh, hearing about uh, the GPMA R task force uh, activities. So we will start with two presentations from Ricky and uh, Yuki. Uh, the first uh, part of the presentation will cover the GPMA R task force, uh, the past activities and future initiatives. In the, in the second half of the presentation, uh, Ricky and Yuki will share with us a very interesting survey that GPMA uh, conducted uh, on open source software usage. Uh, they will share the rationale and motivation behind the survey, and they will discuss key findings and their implementations for, uh, for the industry. And after that, we will go through several pre-collected questions uh, in the Q&A session. And if you have any questions, please feel free to use the chat box. Uh, we will collect and curate the questions and then try to follow up uh, with a blog post after this event. Uh, the presenters uh, for today's uh, event uh, are Ricky and Yuki. Uh, Ricky has worked as a statistical programmer for Jensen Pharmaceutical since February 2015. He is responsible for statistical analysis in clinical trials and e-data submission to PMDA. Before working in the pharma company uh, industry, he has experienced developing bank accounting and customer management systems in Japanese te uh, technology company. And also he is a startup member of the Open Source Software Task Force in GPMA. And Yuki has worked as a statistical programmer, uh, a medical scientific expert in medical science liaison for Novartis Pharma since April, 2017. Recently, he works on new drug development and retrospective studies using medical real world data, such as electronic healthcare record and health claims data. Also, he is a member of the Admiral Alpha de development team and a st startup member of the Open Source Software Task Force in Japan Pharma, Pharma, uh, Pharmaceutical Manufacturers Association, the GPMA. So with that, I will start stop sharing and then turn the ball to Ricky to present uh, the GPMA effort and survey result. Okay. Yeah, thank you for your time, introduction. Yeah. Yeah. Can, can you see my screen now? Yes, we can see your screen. Okay. okay. Uh, let's start. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, we would like to thank our consortium for giving us the opportunity uh, to introduce our activity. Uh, we are a member of Open Source Software Task Force in Japan Pharmaceutical Manufacturer Association, uh, JPMA. Today, we introduce the use of R in Japan's pharma industry. Uh, this is a disclaimer. Uh, the views and opinions expressed in this presentation are those of the speakers and do not reflect opinions of any other individual or organizations. And uh, we will share the survey results today, but the original version is in Japanese. So please download it from the JPMA homepage and refer to it if need. And this is today's agenda. Uh, at first, we will explain about our task force in JPMA as general background. And next, we will share the open source software usage questionnaire record of the survey we conducted in 2022. And we will have a question and answer session at the end. Okay, and let's move to the general background of JPMA task force. At first, I will explain about JPMA. 
JPMA is a voluntary association comprising 72 research oriented pharmaceutical companies. JPMA established in 1968 with the mission of realizing patient oriented healthcare has been contributing to global healthcare advocacy through the development of innovative ethical drugs. JPMA is engaged with various initiatives such as solution of common issues in the pharmaceutical industry, activities to deepen understanding of pharmaceuticals, and international co collaboration with concerned parties. And JPMA and its member companies have established 12 committees comprised of various member companies and six specialized organizations. These companies and specialized organizations carry out activities based on business policies and plans, while building good relationships with a variety of stakeholders in Japan and abroad. Our task force belongs to Drug, Evalu Drug Evaluation Committee, which is one of the 12 committees. Next, I will introduce our task force, Open Source so Software. Our task force of open source software, OSS, is in Data Science Expert Committee and Drug Evaluation Committee of JPMA. The purpose of this task force is to, in, uh, to invest, investigate the use of OSS, which is being more actively used in the pharmaceutical industry, especially for the annex of clinical trial data and work related to regulatory submission and to compile and publish a report on the expected benefits and issues uh, when OSS is used. Uh, this task force has started its activities since 2022 and currently consists of 10 members from pharmaceutical company. As the reason for startup, uh, many pharmaceutical companies were interested in OSS like R and Python. And some people is considering the use of OSS. For example, about use for regulatory submission, validation, and international operation, and others. To digress a little, I would like to share with you the requirements uh, regarding PMDS programming language for analysis aim, uh, aimed at submission for a clinical trial. This screenshot is a part of the technical conformance guide on e-data submission, which is one of the documents related to e-data submission published by PMDA. And you can download this document from PMDA uh, homepage. There are also challenges in using R for submission. And PMDA does not require the use of specific software for the data management and analysis of clinical trial data for the purpose of the submission. Therefore, the choice of software to be used is left to the applicant. And there is no problem in using R for the purpose of submission. However, uh, it's necessary for the applicant to conduct verification work to ensure the quality of the software, reliability of analysis results, and document the procedures and results. Uh, back to the contents of our task force. Uh, this is the content that we have worked on uh, or uh, working on. Uh, we have been active uh, since 2022. In, uh, in 2022, uh, we created two major developments. Our first is about release the document. The document titled uh, Utilization and Considerations for uh, Open Source Software was described as released by JPMA in 2022. In the document, uh, current activities related to R in the pharmaceutical industry, uh, the challenges of using R for regulatory submission, uh, package versions, and operation management, and example of R training are introduced. I will explain uh, this overview uh, next slide. Uh, next, uh, we conducted a survey to understand the, us the usage status of open source software in clinical development work by data science subcommittee member companies and compiled it, compiled it as the OSS usage questionnaire report. Uh, this will be the main focus of today's presentation. And 
talk on about activity from 2023 to uh, this year. The main tema of task force in 2023 is to collect and publish examples of R and Python utilization in the pharmaceutical companies in Japan. The task force is planning to investigate examples of OSS utilization in clinical development and share the introdu introduction procedures, uh, usage environments, uh, software including packages and utilization events. The task force will also continue to consider the use of R for regulatory submission, uh, same as uh, 2022. And this slide is the overview of the documents uh, utilization and consideration for OSS release 2022. And this is a Japanese version on release. Uh, you can download this document from JPMA homepage. This report uh, first introduced the definition of OSS and then introduced OSS that has been particularly active in recent years in the pharmaceutical industry. Its advantages and point to note when using it. In addition, R is used as an example to introduce the management system and the contents of education and training that are considered to be necessary. When it's assumed that OSS is used for regulatory submission work, uh, I explain uh, each uh, section. Uh, section 1 introduces the types of OSS licenses, an introduction to R and activities related to R in the pharmaceutical industry. We introduce the R submission working group, uh, R consortium, PharmaBus, and R position hub. And section 2 describes the challenges in using OSS. And section 2.1 describes the management of uh, operational tasks when using R for regulatory submission, uh, it's necessary to uh, prepare SOPs and corresponding work procedure manuals for each of the processes. Also, uh, section 2.2 and 2.3 uh, describe uh, version control of R and R packages. Uh, when installing multiple R packages and to ensure that everyone in your organization gets the correct R package type and version, it's important to understand the complex dependencies between R packages and use the correct version. The tracking version and uh, dependencies ensure the reproducibility of R program execution results. However, in order to understand and manage the versions of individual R packages and the versions of the dependent R packages all at once, a suitable management system is required. Okay. From here, uh, we would like to share the uh, result of the OSS usage questionnaire report conducted in 2022. The purpose of this questionnaire is to understand the use uh, condition of OSS in clinical development in pharmaceutical companies. As I mentioned earlier, the reason behind the establishment of uh, this uh, task force was that uh, there were many pharmaceutical companies uh, uh, interested in OSS, and we need to investigate the extent to which each company uh, uses uh, and is uh, interested in OSS. The survey period will be from October to November, uh, 2022. Uh, this was uh, one year ago. Uh, the survey target uh, pharmaceutical companies uh, registered with the Data Science Expert Committee in JPMA and includes uh, both domestic and foreign companies. As a result of the survey, uh, we asked uh, 64 companies and received response from uh, 55 companies. All answers are anonymous. Therefore, we have not been able to identify companies uh, that did not respond, and the reasons for non-response are unknown. Uh, from this slide, uh, let's take a look at the answer to each question. The questions are roughly divided into uh, 15 questions. Uh, we also have 50 slides available. The first question is, have you initiated 
or are you considering using OSS R for clinical trial uh, related activities? Uh, yes, already used R was selected by 30 uh, out of 55 companies. Uh, more than half of all companies are already using R. There are also uh, six companies that are currently uh, considering it and four companies uh, that will be uh, considering it in the future. Uh, additionally, uh, 50, 15 companies have not considered anything yet, uh, while about 30% of companies said uh, they are not considering using it. The results, uh, these results show a uh, difference in enthusiasm uh, between companies that are actively implementing R and those that are not. Next question, uh, which steps do you use R and uh, multiple choice alone? In previous slide, the study companies have already used R. Uh, it's often used for sample size estimation, exploratory analysis, uh, modern analysis, and preparation of documents for internal use. There was little used experience of R for preparation and QC of clinical study dataset and TLMs and preparation of e-data related materials. It's thought that R is starting being introduced in the process of creating materials that are not directly submitted as regulatory submission documents. We asked the companies uh, that chose the last two options, uh, internal document creation and operational efficiency uh, for more detail. Uh, some companies are uh, using R for uh, project management tool and online manual using R Shiny, and there was also the creation of reports in HTML format and presentation materials using R Markdown. And six companies selected uh, other. Uh, many respondents uh, answered that they use it for population analysis in clinical farm policy. The next question is. Have you experienced or plan to submit documents written in R to regulatory authorities? About half of the companies have submitted documents written in R to the regulatory authorities. On the other hand, about 40% of the companies do not plan to submit it. R is already used by many com uh, companies, uh, but it's often used for a purpose other than prepar preparing documents to be submitted to uh, regulatory authorities. Uh, next question is, have you submitted experiences or plan to submit the program in R to regulatory authorities? Uh, over half of the companies have no experience of submitting the program in R to the regulatory authorities or have no plan to submit it. On the other hand, uh, about 30% of companies have submitted such programs before. Uh, some companies are uh, used of R for a purpose other than preparing documents to be submitted to regulatory authorities. It's also possible uh, that R is used for uh, documents for which the regulatory authorities does not require the program. However, uh, because R is often used in clinical pharmacology studies, it was not possible to confirm the details of whether uh, what was submitted to uh, regulatory authorities was a clinical pharmacology uh, study or uh, something else for uh, analysis of clinical trial uh, through this survey. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. From this slide, I will pass it over to uh, Yuki. Thank you. Okay. Okay, and this is Yuki, and I will explain from this slide. And next question is what environment use uh, what environment you use R? And this is multiple choice question. Um, many companies have already started using R in their environment. Um, over 80% companies answered personally owned computers. Um, also over 30% com companies answered shared infrastructure using internal servers. 20% companies answered shared infrastructure with IRs, and no companies use SaaS. Next slide, please. OK. 
Okay, next question is who manages the environment for using R? 40% companies answered that IT department manages the environment for using R. On the other hand, in similar proportions, about 40% companies answered they manage the, R, they manage the R environment by individual responsibility. And some companies answered they manage R each department. And next question is, do you manage our libraries? 40% company answered yes. They manage the library. But 60% answered no. They do not. In the following questions, many companies mention that reliability for libraries as a challenge, suggesting that many companies are still considering handling libraries. And next question is how to train and run R in your company. And this is multiple choice question. 60% company answered self-training. It means that they run R by themselves. And also about 30% answered no training. And they have little experience of receiving training. 25% receiving internal in-house training and 10% receiving vendors training. And next question is, have you ever outsourced analysis using R? About 90% companies answered that they have no experience of outsourcing using R. In the response to the following questions, there is an opinion that there are a few CROs can do an analysis using R. So at least in Japan, there may be few opportunity to outsource R analysis. And next question is, what are the expected efforts on introducing R into your company? This is a multiple choice question. About seven, about seventy percent companies answered that they expected for modern analysis, and fifty percent companies answered that they expected for cost reduction, and thirty percent company answered easy access to information due to the large number of users. Um, on the other hand, few companies, um, about ten percent answered that they expected transparency of algorithms which is characteristics of open source software. And next question is, what are the concern about R when used for NDA? This is multiple choice question. Regulatory, accept regulatory acceptability and library reliability are over 70%. 70%. Reliability of the library is the biggest concern because everyone can release the packages. In addition, although there is no message from regulatory authorities such as PMDA to allow specific software, there is, there is a concern about the acceptability of R by regulatory authorities because there is limited experience and information on the use of R. Also, about 60% answered internal environment is their concern and 40 percent answered few internal engineers it means that environment for the use of r is still still be still being established for pharmaceutical companies in japan and next question is what was the concern when r is used not only for NDA, but also for clinical study related activities. This is my multiple choice question. About 60% companies answered library reliability and about 50% companies answered few internal engineers. One third answered internal environment and regularity accept acceptability. These answers also show that many companies have concern about the reliability of library and human resources.
And next question is, which department in your company is actually using R? Uh, we do not count in detail, but clinical department, the data science, statistical, statistical analysis, and pharmacology department mainly use R, but other departments also use it. Since the questionnaire was conducted by the data science expert committee of the JPMA, Many responses may come from the clinical department related, clinical development related department and division. There, there is a possibility that R is already used across the company. And next question is, does your company have a department which is specialized for programming? About 40% answers that they have departments specialized in programming. Next question is, what do you expect from the JPMA task force in the future regarding the use of open source software such as R and Python? We categorize answer into six categories, use for regulatory submission, NDA, and case report, OSS reliability, difference from SAS, and startup support. And there are particularly high expectations regarding the use of OSS in regulatory submission. Okay, I, I am now approaching the end of my presentation. Um, in conclusion, I'd like to summarize what we have said during to, today's, pre, today's presentation. Um, OSS, especially R, is already widely used in many Japanese pharmaceutical companies. On the other hand, many concerns remain, such as the reliability of package, packages and libraries, and limited experience for regulatory authority accept, acceptance. JPMA plans to continue its activity to ensure that OSS is widely used in the Japanese pharmaceutical companies. Awesome. Are there any questions you may have? Thank you. Thank you so much, Miki and Yuki. This is really, really interesting to see the survey result from the, the GPMA survey a questionnaire. Uh, so I have a couple of pre-collected questions. Uh, uh, so I guess for the Q&A session, I will try to go through all those questions. And for people who have uh, additional questions, please feel free to share that uh, in the chat box and uh, we will go to that like uh, after the after the event. Uh, so my first question is that uh, it is really great to see the wide adoption of R in the Japan pharma industry. Uh, and uh, it's really interesting to see like Yuki, you shared a number of use cases uh, over there. Uh, I wonder like uh, from your perspective, uh, can you share some specific use cases that you see that the usage of open source language bring a lot of value compared to the traditional ways of uh, doing things? Uh, I answered it. That's a big question. The survey results show that R is mainly used for sample size estimation, exploratory analysis, uh, model analysis, and preparation of documents for internal use. Uh, in addition, examples of uh, actual use case in the pharmaceutical, uh, Japan pharmaceutical industry are compiled by the task force this year, and we will show it around this spring uh, what we uh, do. We are still uh, drafting, uh, but for example, uh, extracting table in RTF file to data frame and data visualization by using R shiny, for examples for uh, sample size estimation and characteristic com comparison of study design and other will be introduced. Well, thank you for sharing. Yeah. 
Uh, and uh, maybe a, a follow-up question on that one. You share a number of very good use cases. Can you share some of the commonly used packages like in your company, uh, such as like uh, packages used for sample size estimation or some uh, or packages used for TLF generation, etc. In this survey, uh, we have not collected information about packages. I'm sorry, uh, I cannot uh, talk about uh, our individual company uh, case study today, but uh, I'm not sure about commonly used packages for or sample size calculation, but the TLF generation packages uh, developed by uh, Palmabas have been introduced in the Japanese community, uh, community uh, and uh, many people are interested in it. Uh, also, uh, this is just my personal impression, uh, but from the perspective of creating analysis data, uh, I believe, I believe the player, Springer, and Lovely Day are often used. R is useful and powerful not only for calculation and data creation, but also for visualization packages such as our Shiny. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I think Shiny is definitely very exciting uh, mm -hmm. to be adopted by the industry. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, like another thing I saw in the survey, which is very interesting, is that you show that like about half of the companies have already submitted materials generated from our two regulatory authorities. And I'm just curious that do you know whether those are submitted to PMDA or FDA? Uh, unfortunately, uh, such information was not collected in this survey. Uh, since the target of this study is not divided into Japanese companies and foreign capital companies, I think that's the number fifty percent includes both PMDA and FDA submission. And if we have the opportunity to conduct the survey again in the future, mm -hmm. we would like to consider research like this question. Thank you. Yeah, that that would be that would be interesting to learn, like how many people submitted our generated material to PMDA versus to FDA. Yeah. 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 And in your presentation, I saw that like you mentioned R and Python specifically. And I'm curious, like uh in Japan, like what is the most commonly used programming language uh from universities uh, among maybe like master and PhD students? Okay, I will, I answer these questions. And I was a PhD student, student in medical school. And in my case, OSS such as R and Python are popular and familiar. The common programming language depends on their department and maybe timing. But I think the younger generation has highly affinity for OSS. And one recent survey showed that Python, Java, and C++ are commonly used commonly used and run programming language by Japanese university students. In addition, I have an impression that many Japanese pharmaceutical companies programmers do not necessarily have a background of programming in university. And they sometimes learn and receive training after joining, joining the company. For example, actually I learned SAS recent three years. Wow. Well. Thank you. Sorry, if, uh, I think I lost my question list over here. Give, give me one second. All right, and back. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, so uh, I think it's very interesting. I think it's pretty pretty similar to what we saw in like uh like uh universities from other 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 uh, other uh, other regions. Yeah, I feel like like the probably people are following similar like a uh, trend in terms of open source software over there. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, maybe a follow up question on that. Uh, I feel like nowadays everybody's talking about AI and large language model, and etc. And then there are a lot of excitement about open source AI models such as GPT, and Llama 2, etc. Uh, I'm curious that in, in Japan pharma industry, whether this is also a hot topic and uh, whether people start to exploring LLM uh, and what are some potential use cases people may start uh, looking into. Okay, um, the use of large language models, um, LLMs, is often restricted in, in, in order to prevent the leakage of privacy and company information. But I believe that we are exploring the potential of LLMs active, actively. And also, since the current LLMs are de developed based on the training data in English, I heard that Japanese companies and government aim to develop their original LLMs. In addition, I have that some Japanese company have already started to use LLMs, and it is used for creating documents such as a meeting minutes and catching journal article information, or collecting real world data, um, creating and combating and um, fixing programming codes. Yeah, I think that's very interesting to learn and also interesting to to hear about kind of the concern about like the training data has been in English. Yeah, but the use cases I think are pretty common. Yeah, across like different countries. I feel like like from our side, we are also exploring like ways to use LM to generate code or generate a document, etc. It will be very interesting to see how far it gets us to, yeah. Cool. And in the uh, my last question is that I think it's really interesting to see in the survey, like you classified like the top areas that the uh, Japan pharma industry want the GPMA task force to look into. And I think those are with very good overlap with some of the global effort, such as like how to make NDA more smoothly, such as like package reliability, and cetera. And then I, I know that like uh, globally, there are a couple of cross industry working groups looking about looking at, for example, software validation recommendation. There is a R validation hub on the R consortium. Uh, and uh, like uh, like our team, like the R consortium submission working group is looking at the feasibility of using open source software for regulatory submission. And then there are also a lot of cross industry uh, like uh, uh, co collaborations on building pharma specific packages such as what you mentioned about Admiral, et cetera. Yeah, and uh, I, I I want to ask you that uh, moving forward, how can we collaborate more closely globally, maybe make better connections uh, between GPMA and also some of other nonprofit organization efforts uh, so that we can learn from each other? Thank you. Um, first of all, I believe that it is important to share information with each other. And discussion on the utilization of R has been very active in Japan recent years, but it's it but it is really and but, but it is still limited. And in the regulatory submission, there is an opinion that uh, what only R can do is limited, and traditional SaaS is sufficient. I think it is important for many people to know the unique and flexible function of CR. Actually, our OSS task force has just started in 2022, and we are gathering the information. I want to know the global activities related to R in pharmaceutical companies. And besides, I want, to, I want you all to know about activities in Japan. And there are limited opportunity to discuss R in Japan community, also in Japanese pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical companies. I hope to continue collaborating and discussing with global community such as such as uh, our consortium. Thank you. That's like, that is awesome. I know like Joe Ricker, who is the executive director of our consortium, is also in the call today. So maybe we can follow up to schedule a another meeting to talk about future collaboration. Okay, thank you. Oh.
Awesome. Yeah. So I think those are all the questions from my side. And uh, I think this is really, really interesting to see the recent effort from GPMA and also to learn about the survey result. Uh, thank you very much. I think I will close today's session. Uh, and thanks everybody for joining. And if you have any questions, please feel free to um, to share up with us offline. And uh, we will try to uh, follow up with a blog post after this event. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Uh, thanks so much for taking time and joining today.